Hi, I'm Phyllis Lang and welcome to Nightwear. This video demonstrates the use of the observing plan document as it might be used at the telescope. We'll cover adjusting the layout so that you can view the data that is most useful to you, setting and using filters for your data, and sorting your data however you please, all in real time at the telescope. First, we'll start by opening uh, an observing plan that I created and uploaded to the plan library recently. This particular plan goes with the article A Dozen Winter Planetaries that appears in the February issue of Sky and Telescope magazine. First, we'll have a look at the general layout of this window and how it can be used at the telescope to give you the best data that you want. First, at the top, you can see there are several tabs. Each contains either a filter setting or localization information that is pertinent to the plan and it's running at the telescope and some general descriptive metadata. We'll look at the localize tab and we need to set the location and time for which the plan is to run. I've checked the apparent coordinates so that the program will calculate for me the apparent position of any object and display that. I will not use the fetch requested DSS image checkbox because generally I only fetch DSS images when I actually need one. The time and date can be set in this area and since it's mid-afternoon at the making of this video I might choose the end of twilight this evening. So that pretty much sets an, in, uh, an introductory uh, look at the observing plan document as we will run it. To refresh all the calculations in the report area, we click Run, and all the information is updated. Now we'll begin to look at the various options you can use to change the layout of the data area. Firstly, only a subset of all possible columns is currently displayed. You can change the columns that display at any time by using Customize. You can manage columns individually or you can use some presets that quickly configure the layout to your liking. This is a rather large screen capture so I'll choose the Deep Sky configuration. And if I were using a netbook or something small with a small screen, I might use the compact edition. And as you can see, the columns displayed vary. Now if you want to pick and choose exactly what you'd like to see, we can move these various columns around, turn them on, turn them off. Um, there are several just out of view of the screen grab for this video. But essentially you can turn on and off any of these columns that you wish and you can move them and you can turn them back on. And as you can see your changes are reflected immediately. Another thing that you might find helpful is that the color scheme used in the report section can be adjusted in many different ways. Uh, you can get to the Report Styles dialog box by right-clicking in the Report area and choosing Report Style Browser. You can also find this on the Options menu of Deep Sky Planner under Report Style Browsing. So here I've chosen the Slate style. It seems to display an agreeable shade of blue on my monitor. You might also try some of the others. Uh, spruce gives some nice greens, maple gives some nice yellows, and desert gives some browns. You can play with this on your uh, personal monitor until you get colors that are contrasty enough for you to see. And of course there is the night vision mode in Deep Sky Planner that will red filter any display completely. Along with the color schemes, you can change the colors of the lines, you can change the size and style of the fonts, 
you can essentially set the style any way you wish. And once you choose a style that you like, you should click Favorite to make it update the rest of the program. I'll go back to Slate so that we don't make any changes. And we'll continue. The final uh, tool we have at our disposal to uh, change the layout is something that's called a hot zone button. Earlier in this segment of the video I showed you the pane splitter that is a part of Deep Sky Planner now for several years. The hot zone button allows you to pop a pane to its wide open position. So now the report pane is as large as can it can get within the constraints of the window and if I click it again it pops back to its previous position. There's also a hot zone button between the report text area and the details pane which I can reveal this way. The details pane uh, displays detailed information obviously on the selected object in the text area. So if we want to see a DSS image of the selected item, we can click the refresh button and the DSS image is retrieved and shown in this area and the uh, DSS image can be resized according to the amount of space allowed for it. Also in the detail area we have the uh, daily altitude graph and I'll use the hot zone button. And there's the daily altitude of NGC 1514. The yearly altitude tool is over here as well and this shows us the best time to view it throughout the year at 8 p.m. As you can see, the best t time of the year to do that is about now, February. And then the final tool available here would be a list of any observations in the database for this object. So again, the Hot Zone button is a great way to change the layout of the different panes in the observation plan window. Now that we understand how to change the layout of a report, let's actually get ready to filter and sort the data for use at the scope. Okay, so I'd like to go back to the more detailed Deep Sky preset layout. And I think that uh, I'll turn off some of the common name columns to make some space for the rest of the document view and let's see how that looks. Now you can scroll left right and none of the user data columns are being used so I'll turn off those. The catalog from which these data are taken, these catalogs don't include position angle and inclination angle so I can turn those off and uh, of course I can turn off some of these atlases if I choose. So let me do that and then we'll have a look at filters.